Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we'll learn about how to use the InfluxDB v3 JavaScript client library. This is part of the client library series and is brought to you by InfluxDB University. InfluxDB University offers free live and self-paced training on a variety of topics, including InfluxDB v3, client libraries, data science tools, and much more. But today, we'll focus on the JavaScript client library. We'll talk about what it is, the requirements you need to actually run and use it, how to write data to InfluxDB v3 with it, how to query data from InfluxDB v3, and we'll also cover additional resources and places you can receive help if you have further questions. Last but not least, we'll finish with a demo. So what is the InfluxDB v3 JavaScript client library? Well, it's a software package that provides a set of tools and functions for interacting with InfluxDB v3 uh, using JavaScript programming language. It allows developers to efficiently query and write time series data from and to InfluxDB, which simplifies the integration of InfluxDB into any JavaScript applications. There are some advantages to using the InfluxDB client library. Other than the ease of use, it offers various query advantage. The first is that it wraps the Apache Arrow client in a convenient InfluxDB v3 interface that allows users to execute either SQL or InfluxQL queries, request server metadata, and retrieve data from InfluxDB v3 or InfluxDB Cloud dedicated using flight protocol with gRPC. What this means is that you get all of the advantages of using Apache Arrow JavaScript client. And the Apache Arrow JavaScript client enables the transport of really large data sets over network interface through the flight protocol with gRPC. And this offers really efficient serialization and deserialization, as well as bidirectional streaming. So you get to take advantage of all of the benefits that Apache Arrow and Apache Arrow Flight offer under the hood. How does the JavaScript client library work? Well, writes are implemented via the slash write API endpoint, which is the same way that they were implemented in previous versions of InfluxDB. And queries are implemented, implemented via the Apache Arrow Flight client and utilize the Arrow format and flight gRPC protocol. Let's talk about some of the requirements. So first you'll need an InfluxDB cloud account. Then you'll need to create a database or a bucket. Next you'll need to create an authentication token. And optionally, you can provide an organizational ID. Um, you can set this to an empty string. Uh, so it's up to you if you want to use that. Let's talk about how we can actually create a database or bucket and an authentication token. In order to create a database or bucket, what we'll do is we'll navigate to the buckets page. Then we'll click create bucket. We'll name our bucket, perhaps something like my bucket. We'll give it a data retention preference, and then we'll hit create. Now we're ready to create a token. We'll navigate to the API tokens page, click generate a token. We'll create an all access token for the purpose of this demonstration. And we can copy that token to our clipboard if we need. Now let's talk about installation. So you can install uh, the JavaScript client with a variety of different methods. Um, and to write or query InfluxDB3, simply add at influx data slash InfluxDB3 dash client as a dependency to your project using your favorite package manager. Now let's talk about how we can write data. So after you've imported your package, assign constants for environment variables, and then instantiate the InfluxDB client inside an asynchronous function. Make sure to close the client when it's no longer needed for writing or querying. So for example, here we would instantiate our client, and we're also including our environment variables for our URL, which is the uh, URL or host name of the InfluxDB Cloud account that we have, our token, and our database name. And then we create that um, main function where we can actually instantiate our client with the host and the token. And then the rest of our write and query code would go there. And then when we're done, we can close the client. So let's talk about the different ways we can write data to InfluxDB using the JavaScript client. The first way is to write line protocol. So line protocol is the ingest format for InfluxDB v3. And we can use the write method to actually write line protocol data to a particular database or bucket. So line protocol consists of the following attributes. It has a measurement, tag, field, and timestamp. 
And when you write a line protocol point in FluxDB, tags are used to store metadata to your instance, and fields are used to contain the actual time series value. So for example, if I was monitoring the temperature in a variety of rooms, 72 degrees might be my room temperature field, and kitchen, basement, living room, bedroom, these might all be tag values for the room tag. However, it's important to notice or note that both fields and tags convert to columns in a table in InfluxDB. So in practice, they are identical. This distinction between tags and fields is really only for organizational purposes for the user. So here's an example of how we would write line protocol data to InfluxDB. We would first create a variable called line, or we would provide our line protocol data. In this instance, we are writing to the measurement stat uh, with a tag called temperature, and we have two fields, an average field and a max field, and our timestamp. Then we pass in that line to the right method, and we specify the database that we want to write that point to. The second way we can write data is with the point method. So we can create a point object and then write that point object using the client.write method. It's also important to note that you can append points to an array and write an array of points into InfluxDB v3 by passing the entire array into the client.write method. So here's an example of creating a new point. So we're writing the same data, but just in a point object. And we pass that p value into the write method and again specify our database. Similarly, we can also write a record and write a record object. And just like with points, we can append records to an array and write an array of records in FluxDB as well by passing that array into the client.write method. So here's an example of actually creating a point record. And once we've created that point record, then we can pass in that sensor data into the write method and again specify where we want to write that sensor data to. Now, an important note here, an important note about upsert specifically, you can upsert a field, but not a tag. So for example, if we were to write this first point, stat comma unit equals temperature with an average field value of 20.5 and a max value of 45.0 with a particular timestamp, and then we added a second point where the only difference is that we've added a, an additional two to our average value and our max value for 20.52 and 45.02 respectively, then the second point will actually upsert the fields and our previous value or our first point will be overwritten with the new field values that contain that two. Contrast this to if we were to add an additional two to our tag. In this instance, we would not upsert those values. We would simply add more tag values and a second point to our database. Now we're ready to query data. So here we'll use SQL to query InfluxDB by specifying the query language and the mode into the query method. So first we construct our SQL query. We'll say select all from stat, where time is greater now than now and interval of five minutes. So we're looking at data from the last five minutes because we just wrote this point to InfluxDB. And we also specify uh, the tag unit in temperature. So now that we've done that, um, we can actually execute our query by using the query method, passing in our query, specifying the database that we want to query from, and our query type. In this case, our query type is SQL because we are querying with SQL. Here are the uh, following query data parameters that exist for the JavaScript client library. Query, this parameter currently accepts the string literal of SQL or InfluxQL, um, and we hope to add prepared statements to this soon. The query type, this parameter accepts a string literal of a default of SQL and other options are coming soon. And last but not least, database, the database name that you wish to query from. So for a full code example of how to write different record types, line protocol, points, and records, and how to query with SQL, I recommend visiting the following URL. It also contains examples for how to query with InfluxQL as well. Now let's also learn about some additional resources and help. So I recommend looking up the JavaScript client library repository. If you go to influxcommunity.com slash influxdbv3 uh, hyphen JavaScript, you can find that client library repository and also looking up the JavaScript client library documentation.
Finally, I encourage you to join us at our community Slack workspace at influxdata.com slash Slack. And to ask any questions specific to InfluxDB v3, please join the InfluxDB underscore IOX channel. But to ask any questions about client libraries, please ask them in the general channel. And then here are some helpful resources to get more help. So our forums are also a valuable tool for asking questions and that you can find those at community.influxdata.com. We also have our Influx community GitHub repo where you can actually find the InfluxDB v3 JavaScript client library and that's maintained there as well. And then our docs are, can be found at docs.influxdata.com. And last but not least, we have our blogs at influxdata.com slash blogs. And again, Influx Community is a GitHub organization where you can find a collection of examples and demos for using and building solutions with InfluxDB, as well as where all of the client libraries are maintained. Thank you so much. Now we'll go over a quick demo of how to use the client library. So here we have a Docker file that simply um, is running a Node.js image. And we um, npm install our InfluxDB p3 client. Um, and then we are setting our environment variables. So we have our uh, URL where um, it contains the region where my cloud account is. And then I have my authentication token that I've created. And as well, I also have a database that I created called test. Then I have this um, index JavaScript script. And essentially what I'm doing here is um, instantiating the client like we specified before in this um, main function. And then I'm writing a point with the point method, passing it in here. Also writing a point with the uh, record method. And last but not least, also writing a point with line protocol. And then I prepare a query where I'm saying select star from stat, um, the same query as we had before, I'm providing the query type. And then I'm actually performing that query. So I've already built this uh, container, so now I can just simply run it. And we can see that I am returning three points for um, the three different ways that I wrote those points. They all have slightly different uh, timestamps because I didn't provide them and so they're being executed in order. And yeah, that's our quick demo. Thank you so much.